Shalom and be one and welcome to another installment of the Keith's Rants. Uh, this is a segment here on the Black Narrative where we're able to kind of delve into topics that we wouldn't usually be able to fully discuss on the show or fully kind of flesh out. And it's a bit more of an informal, freeform kind of way of discussing uh, these various topics. And uh, it's an open forum, so definitely feel free to comment, you know, give your thoughts on it. Uh, bring smoke if you have any, just whatever you feel is necessary. You know, we want to promote free thinking. We want to promote uh, conversation within the community. And a question that I would like to propose today is how much should we value what we perceive as modern black culture or even black culture as a whole? And when I reference black culture, I, of course, I'm going to, given the fact that I've grown up in the United States, I'm going to primarily be looking at it from the viewpoint of American black culture, given the fact that I've grown up in it. But this will span across three main genres that we, because oftentimes when we speak about culture in the black community, you don't oftentimes hear uh, Langston Hughes being uh, referenced or a Basquiat. It's oftentimes boiled down to music and dance and food as well but we're going to focus on music and dance today and so i'm going to be covering primarily uh r&b hip-hop and dance hall as far as the, the three main uh three main branches of uh, uh western black music that is put on a certain kind of pedestal and oftentimes debated about and have a lot of strong emotion behind them. And some people might say, you know, due to my background, I shouldn't um, be included in uh, conversations such as uh, this or, you know, I might need to stay in my lane or, you know, what have you. But there's a couple things with that. Firstly, just like I've said before, you know, growing up uh, in America, I really don't have much of a, another context outside of uh, black American culture. So that is going to be the primary um, uh, thing for discussion today. And another thing is I can talk about whatever the hell I want to. You know, you're not Yahweh. You're not Yeshua. You ain't my pops and you ain't my mama. So with whatever conversation, whatever thing I feel is going to be enriching to the black community, I'm going to speak on it. And I encourage any black person, regardless of nationality or quote unquote cultural black, uh, cultural background, to speak on things that are relevant to the black community as a whole. You don't hold your tongue. Don't feel like there's somebody gatekeeping you from uh, having a certain dialogue. If you feel like something, a topic needs to be discussed and is enriching for the black community, speak on it. Don't hold your tongue because how are we going to refine each other if we're not able to speak on these things, iron sharp as iron, then we all need food for thought. We can't live in an echo chamber. But I want to start off by kind of discussing the origins to why blacks in the West have such a strong, visceral connection to music and dance within our cultures. And one example that I could kind of show that really kind of that really kind of illustrates this passion i guess you could call it for one's music was or is uh the situation that happened during the carnival in england 
uh, in London, if I recall right. Uh, I might be saying the wrong city, but it was somewhere in the United Kingdom. And during this carnival, they had Afro beats playing during a certain segment of it. And many Caribbeans took to social media, Twitter, TikTok, uh, I, I reckon YouTube, in order to discuss the issue of having Afrobeats being played at Carnival. And a lot of Caribbeans were very upset with the fact that Afrobeats was played at Carnival and looked at it as a certain kind of disrespect to Caribbean music and the Caribbean culture. And also they looked at it as a certain, I guess, encroachment uh, in a way on their culture. But the thing about it, I mean, am I the biggest fan of Afrobeats? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say all that, but it's music. It's music, man, and it's carnival. Look, we've got to put these things in their proper cultural con in, in their proper place of importance. This is carnival. You're not feeding the homeless. You're not reading books to children. You're not writing anything. You're not educating nobody. You're dancing to music. That's it. It's not that deep. If they want to play Afro beats, if they want to play hip hop, if they want to play R&B, it's carnival. Y'all are dancing. We're just dancing to the music. And people are up in arms having whole think pieces on a couple Afrobeat songs being played. So because WizKid was on the playlist for the day, you have whole entire rants and ravings and, and, and dissertations being taken up. And most oftentimes these niggas wouldn't wouldn't delve this deep into any other topic. You're going to delve deep into the topic, the, the, the philosophy of the music of your culture. And you're not going to touch on all the other woes that are occurring in the black community. We've got to get our priorities straight, people. And that is just a, a perfect example that kind of illustrates just how visceral people get when it comes to discussing music but it makes sense because when you look culturally across uh, uh transatlantic slave trade and the people that are descended from it oftentimes our forms of expression were very limited not only in the fact that we weren't able to full, you know read and write to a full fidelity and that we were restricted from that but also in the fact that you always had ears on you. You can never freely express yourself around, you know, white folk, but you even had to be careful around your own people as far as discussing certain things because you never knew who would run to who. And so for hundreds of years, we were restricted in that sense and we didn't feel the ability to be able to fully express ourselves. And so music and dance, song became our way of being able to release those emotions, to explore our humanity from pain and sorrow, dread, hope, and even joy. All these different forms of expression became encapsulated in our music. And that's why the music that we produce is, is completely uh, uh, different. You, if you could feel the emotion compared to other groups of people and their music, not to take anything away from them, but that was our sole way of expressing ourselves. And so that is why something like the carnival in, uh, situation occurred, because when we feel like our music is being encroached on we don't view it as well 
you know that nobody means any harm it's, it's viewed as they're encroaching on us this is an attack on us as people this is an attack on uh, th th this is something harmful when in reality it's just music is good you know if you want to enjoy your music be proud of it even that's fine but we've got to put music in its proper context as a form of entertainment yes it's also a form of expression but when it starts to become something that is a divisive tool amongst people and whole entire debates are being fought back and forth because of it it starts to get a bit ridiculous and people will talk about all these different things people in the black community want to talk about all these different things being a distraction but what is our dance and music going to do to propel us forward as a community and now that i've kind of touched on that aspect i want to kind of explore how hip-hop r&b and dance hall has kind of have kind of changed over the years and the main aspects I want to look into is uh, uh, what has been promoted relationship wise what's been promoted morally and how the music is being promoted in a political sense and to start off with uh, uh, relationship wise and I'm just going to look into a couple songs that I've um been listening to now yeah guilty pleasures you know guilt, like you know guilty as charged i i do indulge in my ignorant music i i do gotta say that let's not be hypocritical but i i do know its place within my life but there was a song by maxo cream featuring megan stallion called she's live and i was listening to the lyrics of that song and I mean, great beat, you know, catchy, all that. But listening, yeah, and it was kind of like, uh, basically, the, the the premise of the song was Maso Cream was describing certain traits in a woman that he desired, and Megan Thee Stallion was doing it on the flip side, of course, you know, discussing traits that she would desire in a man. And listening to these various traits you were able to realize that it wasn't describing a relationship between i mean i mean of course it wasn't describing a relationship between you know a uh, uh, husband and wife that you would you know experience as far as you know love and support what was being described in this song was a relationship between a pimp and his hoe that is what was being described in the song and if you look across music of modern uh black music oftentimes and this is something that i've been uh bringing up in my personal life the people that i've been conversing with is we have the culture as far as our relationships has been shifted from us seeking out how to deal with each other as husband and wife you know uh uh, uh people that are in honest relationships and it's shifted the focus has been shifted into trying to figure out how we could deal with each other through the dynamic of a pimp and a hoe and so now if you look across the schema of music you're hearing these rappers and even these r&b artists describing relationships in a way where the man the black man is default a pimp in a relationship and the black woman is default a prostitute within a relationship and so this is something that's being pushed within our music and this is something that's being pushed within r&b and hip-hop and we've got to acknowledge when there's a degradation and when something is starting to become very much so a detriment to our people and now this isn't not mind you i'm i'm, I'm gonna bring up the fact i love I, I love me some hip-hop and r&b you know and, and and we all got the ignorant playlist 
but I'm not going to because of my personal taste. I'm not going to denote uh, or, or take away the dis how destructive that kind of music can be to somebody that takes that stuff as gospel. Because I remember growing up in school and you would have, you know, young brothers and young sisters who would be reciting these songs and they didn't recite them in a way as, you know, this is catchy. This was their mantras. This was what motivated them. This is how they got through the day. This is what was on their minds. This fed their spirits. And so this is a detrimental thing. And there was even another song that uh, uh, kind of caught my attention. Uh, and it was by Ari Lennox from her new album, ASL. A very, when I tell you that, that it's a very toxic album. And this was a very toxic song. But with this song, she was uh, having a conversation with uh, this, uh, this dude who was uh, sung by Lucky Day. And she was telling the dude, you know, I got, I got a man. And the dude was trying to spit game to her. And as the song progressed, basically she ended up being seduced by this man. And this is another thing that you see across R&B and hip hop is, you know, there's no fidelity. There's no kind of sacred, there's nothing sacred about a relationship you know, in the black community. And, 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 and that's what occurs, that's what's occurring in, in the black community now, is we've forgotten how to value each other as men and women. And now a relationship is just kind of a commodity. It's kind of just something that you do to pass time in a way, and to receive sexual gratification and attention, instead of something you get into to build something. And the music is promoting that. The music is very much so reflecting that. So that's not something to really kind of celebrate. And that kind of leads into the morality aspect of the music being pushed in this day and age. And, and the music that has been pushed for uh, a, a while now. And when you look at uh, these different songs, like for instance, across hip hop, you'll have all these different debates that people will have about, you know, conscious rap and all these different things. But we've got to recognize how destructive that genre can be as well. Of course, it's one of those things where you got a few conscious rappers and this, that, and the third. But a lot of, of young men that don't have, uh, kind of have a bearing as far as how to be a man, believe that shooting up each other and selling dope and doing all these different things is how you earn your stripes. And so the music becomes the uh, uh, soundtrack to that. And that's why you have an example of, you, of Malice from Clips changing his name to No Malice because he saw how destructive the music he was making was to the community because people will come to him and say, oh, I, I did such and such, and I did this and that, while listening to your music, you inspired me. That's not something to be glorified in. And I'm noticing a lot of people are having whole conversations and, and debates about uh, uh, the musical genre of hip hop. And now, you know, if you if you want to have a whole court about your, these debates, that's, that's fine. You know, it's, I, I, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your 24 hours. But it is something where you've got to acknowledge that we're going back and forth about a genre that's really not helping to build us up. There's not much productivity that's going on due to this genre. And this isn't me condemning it to the point where I'm saying don't listen to it or I'm saying that there's no good that has come from it or there's no good artists that have come from it. But we've got to examine all the death that is and destruction that has come from uh, 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 hip hop or it, not to blame hip hop for the state of black community. But one thing that's very important is your mental diet. 
And oftentimes people bring up the point of, well, you know, people are just talking about uh, what they see. Yes, and we all see it. It's what I remember uh, Isaiah Rashad between before he was, he came out. Yeah, I guess you could call it. Uh, there was an old song that he had called Gusto. And in this song, he basically kind of calls out the, the modern rapper. And he says, you know, like, like, I can't remember the exact lyrics, but you know, like there's killer, like there's a bunch of killers where you're from, all this then a third goes on. Well, okay, how, how are you different? Because these are just black issues that we see constantly. And where is the line between speaking about your reality and it being therapeutic and you making money off of uh, your reality and off of the reality of your community? and it being almost kind of a, a trauma porn that we indulge in, just like with the slave movies. Where's that line? You know, I genuinely do want to ask that question. Where is that line? And so the moral aspect as far as these different drugs being pushed and people even uh, experimenting with various drugs because of these songs, because you, 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 and of course, you know, people do it to take away the pain, but the songs make it sound cool. You got an artist like Future, who, you know, I mean, the dude is glowing. You could tell he ain't a drug user, but he makes anthems, drug anthems, because it just sounds cool. And now you have people that are popping these different pills and doing all these different things and they have an anthem to do it too they they feel like they can relate to these artists and it 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 it, it takes away the severity of these different things and this isn't to put all blame or even a marginal this is even to put a marginal amount of blame on it on the music but it's to say that here we are going back and forth, fighting amongst each other about this music that's not doing anything for us. It's not servicing us. It's not giving us a message. It's not giving us a motive. It's fogging up our mental. And the last aspect I want to talk on as far as um, the, the, what the modern day music is promoting is the politics because now you're seeing uh, these different songs that are discussing uh, different things that are destructive to or or just stagnant st or cause the black community to be stagnant and this is within the conscious and the um, I guess more worldly spaces you have topics hot button issues like feminism and uh, abortion rights and all these different things being discussed in the music and none of these are things that are really beneficial to the black community and yet this is seen as oh okay this is a woke song this is woke music body positivity uh, in the form of accepting obes obesity uh, for example these things are not uh, these are, are I mean it's enabling it's not anything that's going to serve the community or make the community stronger or build up a, a, a better education or feed our homeless or nothing like that. These are things that are white liberals are pushing to, it's basically us regurgitating what white liberals are trying to shove down our throats. And I'll give an example of uh, one song I was listening to and it was it was it was a catchy song. It was called Joy. I can't remember who it was by, but he's and and, and 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 I'll give this example to kind of illustrate on the quote unquote conscious side when people start making a conscious uh, uh, song. This song was talking about you know police brutality and you know basically all the um, the, the the black boys and girls that we've lost. And, and I mean, black men and women as well, of course, to police brutality. And the message of it is, you know, this is why we've got to vote and we've got to march. 
And I remember listening to that. I'm like, something doesn't add up here. Are we really going to take this song and and then, of course, at the end of the song, they played uh, uh, Martin Luther King's speech, and I and and my thoughts were, so this is what our politics within the music realm is going to be. Is it just going to be reduced to just marching and uh, uh, protesting and voting? Is that really what it's going to boil down to? We're just going to get our Fitbits on and get our get our get our miles in. That's what that's gonna. We're gonna get our steps in. That's how we gonna attain our sovereignty. That's how we're gonna get our freedom. But this is what's promoting the music, and even in, in uh, Kendrick Lamar, Lamar's uh, recent album, uh, Big uh, Miss Morale, the Big Steppers, when he went into the whole thing of um, <clears throat> a lot of. I mean, I give him father time. But you had certain songs like uh, Purple Hearts, where you had somebody like some Walker discussing what love is. One of the last people that should be uh, an authority in that realm. And even with Auntie Diaries, it really was just Kendrick regurgitating or taking a, a kind of, taking a liberal stance on the topic of gender identity and sexuality and the LGBT community and formatting it into a song that's digestible uh, and, and that's, I guess, digestible, I guess people would say. So the politics within modern black music uh, is, is starting, to, and, and, and I'm talking on the mainstream, but you know, if you're gonna fight for the genre, then, you know, that's that you know the mainstream music is just pushing a bunch of liberal talking points so i'm not really seeing anything that's helping any of us and i would love for somebody to bring any counterpoints or giving examples of uh uh anything that that's that's not that, that that's the, the, the opposite you know that's that's actually helping the community but i i'm not seeing it so far and on the topic, you know, since, you know, a lot of people are up in arms about dance hall and, you know, the, the Afro beats being encroaching on the dance hall. What is dance hall doing for Jamaica or the Caribbean overall or black folk as a whole in this day and age? It's just following the same exact format. It's sex, drugs and uh, money. And so... This kind of uh, uh, debauchery is being pushed more and more within uh, the islands. Yeah, you know I mean, of course, it's, uh, you know, black folk or black folk, wherever you go. And so these kind of issues have been a, uh, an issue for a while. But now you're, you're, you're seeing it pushed to an even more extreme degree. And a lot of different, I'm noticing more and more within the dance hall scene, more LGBT artists being pushed out there as well. And Jamaica used to be an island where it was very much so known for uh, 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 not being very friendly to that kind of lifestyle. But now it's, I mean, it's being accepted more and more. And so it just goes to show that all these folks wanting to defend these different genres, I've really not seen anything that 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 that's helping our culture when it comes to uh defending these different genres now you can listen to what you want you could do this and a third okay that's cool but when you have divisiveness amongst us because of these genres we've got to do better we've got to allow music to be music allowing entertainment to be entertainment and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go a little further I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just push a little further because this kind of ties in to actions and responsibility and people just being full of it because we oftentimes want to bring up how we should value our culture and yet we don't take the necessary steps to value our culture. And these different things that I've listed are 
examples of how we haven't been taking uh, uh, steps to value it because if we did, pardon me, these different themes wouldn't be so prevalent within our music. And so, pardon me again, one example or a way to tell, because here's the thing, people are full of crap. A lot of people are full of crap. I'm full of crap sometimes. We're all full of crap from time to time. But some more than others. One way to denote if somebody is full of crap is to see what they say and compare it to their actions. And you will know what somebody believes by what they do. That's why, I mean, I'll listen to what people say but I sit back and I watch to see what people do, to see how much you're going to stand on it. Because it's easy to talk, but it's hard to do. A couple examples. Let's say you got uh, this scrawny, kind of poindexter looking guy, right? And you got a bunch of dudes, you know, you, get, you got a couple of dudes standing on the corner. And this poindexter looking guy walks by he's got his you know big rim glasses his pocket protector you know his shoes laced extra tight you know his overalls on what have you they're gonna look at him and the deuce man look he ain't no threat he ain't no threat matter of fact uh, I'm, I'm, I'm 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 a mess with the dude and because they believe that he's no threat they would feel very much so comfortable approaching him and accosting him more than they would uh, 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 other people because he looks like an easy target. And so they're going to act on that. And if he if he tries to defend himself or speak up, the more than likely going to say something along the lines of, man, I bet you ain't going to do nothing. That's what they believe in their heart. And so that belief that this Poindexter doesn't have the ability to defend himself shows within their actions because they're they're comfortable accosting him. Now, he might be a 10th degree black belt in ninjutsu and he might just Rock Lee style transport behind them and eight gates them into a different dimension but they don't know that their assumptions can be completely wrong but because they believe that he's weak they're going to act on that so it's going to become their reality same thing if you got this large muscle brown brother walks by him six foot five three hundred pound built, built built like a wall they're going to look at them and think, man, I'm going to let old boy slide. Because, yeah, he, 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 he looks like he eats nails for breakfast. And he might, be, he might be afraid of a shaking leaf and the rustling of the wind. But because of that belief that he's big, muscle-bound, and, 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 and mighty, they ain't going to touch him. That's belief. That is a uh, belief being put into action and reality. That's that 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 that's that's somebody that that that's the link. That's how you know when somebody believes something because of how they act. So another example I'm gonna give you of how people can be full of it. I remember around the elections. I can't. I'm not sure which ones. It was one of them elections. I would have a lot of conversations with people about politicians and I would say how full of crap I believe politicians were. You know, I would say, you know, what do you call a professional liar, a politician, you know, jokes like that. People would be like, man, you, you ain't lying, man. You know, pol politicians are so full of it, man. They, they, they don't do nothing but lie. And I would get this constantly. No matter who I talk to, they would always bring up, man, yeah, you know, politicians are just full of it. And then time came to vote. And he asked me, hey, you sign up to vote. I said, like, no, I had a conversation with you. You know I don't believe in that. You know I don't believe in voting. And, there were, and people would look at me and say, 
for you. You're not voting. You're not gonna vote. What? Like, you know how important voting? I was like, yo, you just you just had a conversation with me three months ago about how these politicians are liars, and they're like, they're they're deceiving people, and they don't do nothing. We just had this conversation. Now you telling me I need a vote, man? It goes show people are full of it, so they don't believe what they're saying. People oftentimes just say what sounds good, but they're not going to to have actions in order to really back what they're saying. And I say this to say, and 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 I, and I want to end on this note: if we quote unquote value our culture so much as much as we say we have to the point where we're having these debates online and we're drawing lines in the sand and you stay over there and you can't talk about this and you can't do that what happened to our culture what happened to black culture what happened to hip hop what happened to R&B uh, dance hall I'm not really person as to who owns these record companies but I would imagine something similar occurred. Whose hands are they in now? Because they ain't in black hands. No, we gave up our culture. That goes to show how much we believed and valued our own culture. I'll l- look at how much of our music is owned by white hands. And you're going to tell me that you value your culture? If we valued our culture, why would we be on these 360 deals? Why would we start record record companies just to sell off the people on our own labels of our own race? Why is it gangster rap? And all these different uh, uh, platforms, uh, these different destructive forms of music are in the hands of old white men, old Uish white men to be specific. That shows that we did not value our culture. We, 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 we sold it off for, for, for trinkets compared to what we could have had. And now because we sold it off, People are able to come in and alter our culture from the inside out. So is it even our culture anymore? Is it even the same thing anymore? When you're being told, these artists are being told what to make. They're being told what to produce. They're being told uh, uh, what they can and can't talk about. So I beg the question, how much should we value our culture? value black culture, music, and dance? And how much have we valued it? And what can we do to value it again? Because I'm tired of, uh, 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 you, you, you got the keyboard warriors. I'm tired of you keyboard warriors. I want to, to hear some answers as to what you're gonna do in order to bring back uh, uh, glory to the culture that, 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 that we say that we defend. People are saying that they defend and want to fight for so much. How are you gonna take it out of white hands? But that's not being brought up though. That's not being brought up though. It's just other black folk, black folk against black folk. Oh, well, they're playing Apple beats. Oh, we attack these black folk. Oh, well, such and such said, said, said this about hip hop, we gonna attack this group of black folk. Now, of course, you, you might want to check certain things, but when are we going to bring that energy to the people that actually run the music? Now, once I see that, then I'll know that we truly value our culture. And with that, uh, peace. <laughs>